So Oklahoma becomes a state in 1907. They're the 46th state out of 50 to be admitted to the Union. We want to review a couple of things. The first is that people are going to continue moving west throughout the 19th century. So that's the 1800s. Railroads are going to continue to spread into both Oklahoma and Indian territories. And around this time as well, when we're going to see in the second semester, is that industrialization is going to continue to grow as well. People moving out of the farms into big cities um, and doing things that do not does not include farming as their main source of income. Um, Industrialization is going to move um, most of the means of production from individuals into factories and uh, more of mass producing in the United States. Um, And that's going to make things cheaper, more available, um, for the most part going to improve many people's lives um, through industrialization. There are also some drawbacks that we're going to see as we look at U.S. history and industrialization, but this is going to continue to move west throughout the uh, late 1800s, both people, railroads, and industrialization. So this is what the um, the map of Oklahoma looked like in um, the 1880s. So we have in the eastern half of Oklahoma, we have the Indian Territory. So Indian Territory is a lot of the small tribes in the northeast, um, and the Cherokee, the Creek, Seminole, the Chickasaw, and the Choctaw. And the eastern part of Oklahoma, Indian Territory, is very distinct from Oklahoma Territory. Oklahoma Territory has a lot of the Plains tribes that we've researched this semester. The Kiowa, the Cato, the Wichita, the Comanche, the Apache, the Osage, the Sock and Fox, the Kickapoo, just to name a few. The unassigned territories in white is the place or are going to be the places where we see a lot of the land run, settling, um, by people who are not members of a Native American tribe. Those unassigned lands will be started to, um, will start to become a part of um, Oklahoma territory, but they're not going to be tribal membership people. They're just going to be settlers moving west, mainly white, not all white, but mainly white, who are going to uh, settle in those unassigned territories. The other thing is the panhandle. And the panhandle is neutral and becomes a part of Oklahoma. And the reason is that the reason why it is neutral is because of its geography. When Texas is going to become a state in 1848, they want to own slaves. This is pre Civil War. And the Missouri Compromise has stated that any territory north of Missouri's southern border can no longer own slaves. Missouri's southern border is located here near the Cherokee um, tribe in Indian Territory, but it's, it's further south um, than the northern border of Oklahoma. So if you draw a horizontal line from the southern border of Missouri to the what is today the Panhandle and the northern border of Texas, you'll notice that the northern strip is, or this neutral strip above the state of Texas is above Missouri southern border. And so when Oklahoma becomes a state, they're going to include this neutral strip into the state of Oklahoma uh, because of its location. No one owns it. It's not a part of Texas. It's not a part of Kansas. It's not a part of Colorado. Um, They're going to incorporate it as a part of Oklahoma, which gives it its unique shape. So civil war causes Um, like the Missouri Compromise, create the state of Oklahoma that we know today. So two territories, Oklahoma and Indian Territory and the Panhandle, will become um, the state of Oklahoma in 1907. So there are many people in and around Oklahoma that are going to call for statehood around this time. All of the land around Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, Missouri, Kansas, Colorado, New Mexico, are all states by the early 20th century. Many people, the largely white people that settle in Oklahoma are going to want to become a part of the United States. You could probably understand why many of the Native American tribes were against becoming a state. They valued their independence and their cultural um, heritage. They were nervous that that was going to be taken away from them if they became a part of the United States and not a part of their own Uh, tribal organization. 
that's something that we're still dealing with in the United States today. Um, we've referenced a couple of times the Supreme Court decision over the summer that members of tribes are um, legally allowed to be tried by the tribes and not necessarily by the state. That's a pretty landmark independence case um, that was decided by the Supreme Court this summer. The leaders of the five tribes in Indian territory, again, that's the eastern part of Oklahoma, are against statehood. Um, and they're against also joining Oklahoma and Indian territories into one because, again, the culture of these five tribes are very different than the culture of the Plains tribes, as we've identified. The Plains tribes uh, exist in the Great Plains. The five civilized tribes come from um, not the Plains. They come from the, um, the southeast, and so they're not culturally very similar. So they're not going to be really for this... Um, statehood push by people in Oklahoma territory. In 1905, the five tribes are going to propose that they create a separate state from Oklahoma called the state of Sequoia. That would include um, the eastern part of Oklahoma, Indian Territory, um, that they would become their own state in 1905. They um, moved to make the state of Sequoia separate from the state of Oklahoma. Is going to establish representative government. They're going to draft a constitution, but the vote in the United States Congress is delayed for reasons that we're going to talk about in a second. In 1906, Theodore Roosevelt is going to sign into law the Enabling Act, and it's also called the Hamilton Statehood Bill, and it's going to provide legally the opportunity for Oklahoma Territory and Indian Territory to join into one state. This is why they delayed the vote. If they did agree on the state of Sequoia in 1905, then there would be a state of Sequoia and there couldn't be two territories combining into one to make the state of Oklahoma. Um, this is going to be largely caused by the desires of the people living in Oklahoma territory to be able to start to settle in eastern Oklahoma and in, in, in Indian territory. The reason why they're going to want to settle in Oklahoma is because right around this time, um, in Indian territory that is, right around this time oil is being discovered in Oklahoma. And so there is some interest and some desire to combine the two and not make the state of Sequoia. Instead, they're going to make the state of Oklahoma through the Enabling Act of 1906, which is also called the Hamilton Statehood Bill. And it's going to require them to organize together, combined, um, a representative form of government, a constitution. That representative form of government um, has a state senate, state house, and a governor, and sends members to Congress. This is exactly what the state of Sequoia did, um, but because of the interests that we have just discussed, uh, the government in the state of Oklahoma uh, sorry, and the U.S. government is going to delay that vote until um, 1906 when they get this vote passed and they're going to create, um, uh, the territories are going to combine to create the state of Oklahoma. So the constitution that they draft is very progressive. Roosevelt was a progressive. This is a little different than progressive, uh, what it means today to be a progressive. I think that that's a, uh, a term um, that many would kind of react to maybe positively, maybe negatively, depending on uh, your political stances. Um, progressive only means that um, it's establishing things that we would take for granted. So 1906, 1907, we're talking progressive then is establishing um, a constitution that has eight-hour workdays. It's establishing a constitution that written into it um, all kids are required to go to school. That's not something that we would view as very progressive today, but it was for the time period. The Constitution is going to establish three branches, branches of government. It's bicameral, which means that there are two houses. Uh, state House representatives uh, serve two-year terms. State senators serve four-year terms, which is a little bit less than the U.S. senators do. Uh, citizens are allowed to, uh, to propose or um, uh, make new laws or amendments. These are called referendums. 
and a referendum that is, uh, you know, most recent that uh, people would recognize is the referendum to legalize medical marijuana. That got enough signatures by independent citizens that it was put to the ballot for everyone to vote on, and it was passed by all citizens. The state of Oklahoma also has a Bill of Rights in their constitution, which, um, not dissimilar to the U.S. Bill of Rights, talks about what the government can't do to people um, in a lot of ways. This is a uh, viewed as pretty progressive because not many states have state bill of rights. They just have the U.S. Bill of Rights um, as well. So progressive in many ways, but also things from a 2020 perspective um, or a future perspective, not going to be something that is going to be totally viewed as being super progressive today. It's so like we said, labor rights, eight-hour work work day. Um, Convict labor prohibited, no children in mind, all written into the Constitution of Oklahoma. Free public schools, not affiliated with religion, 8 to 16, required to attend. That's been pushed to um, 18. Uh, Suffrage, uh, which means the right to vote, did not include women. So not quite as progressive um, as as other places. Also deals with a ton of issues uh, among race um, and and rights of, of people who are tribal citizens and for African Americans um, who live in the uh, new state of Oklahoma will have less rights than the white people who live in, in the state of Oklahoma. And that's going to create tension that we're going to see next week um, when we discuss the uh, 1921 race massacre in Tulsa. The um, sale of alcohol was legal in Oklahoma territory, but not in Indian territory. And so there is prohibition in the Uh, Constitution of Oklahoma. And this is going to be something that will continue for a long time. Um, Oklahoma has been very conservative with the sale and consumption of alcohol throughout its history. Written into the Constitution prohibition, um, the Volstead Act of 1917 isn't even passed yet, um, or 1914 hasn't even been passed yet. So uh, prohibition in Oklahoma, but you can buy um, alcohol federally. It hasn't been outlawed yet, but it will um, during the 1920s. Uh, Again, Oklahoma is not immune to Jim Crow. Um, There's segregation legally, and um, business uh, requires a charter from the state government, um, and you need licenses, things like that. Um, This is becoming politicized a little bit with the governor's um, most recent update with the pandemic that um, people who don't abide by some of the rules could have their charters um, and their businesses uh, permits and, and licenses revoked from the state. So that they own that power because you have to go to the state to get uh, a license to own a business in the state of Oklahoma. So the process of creating the Oklahoma, Oklahoma Constitution was long. It goes from 1906 to 1907. It's going to end in 1907 when the people vote to adopt the new constitution. Uh, Charles Haskell is going to be elected governor prohibition um, of alcohol was passed as well, and they're going to elect five representatives to Congress. Okay. Statehood, uh, Theodore Roosevelt is going to sign the Statehood Proclamation in November of 1907. It's going to combine Indian and Oklahoma territories and include the panhandle under one state. And the capital, not Oklahoma City, but is Guthrie. Guthrie, just north of Oklahoma City. So like we said, Charles Howell was the first governor Two senators are both Democrats, and interestingly enough, Robert L. Owens and Thomas Gore. There are five congressional districts in Oklahoma, which is the same as today. Um, the d- congressional districts are based on population. So um, you know, each state gets congressional districts based on the number of people that live there. More, more people get more congressional representation because um, they have more people to uh, represent. Seven electoral votes, just like today. Two senators, five districts. Um, equals seven electoral votes in the Electoral College. Some are going to be really excited about statehood. Some are going to be very against statehood. The reaction is pretty mixed. depends on um, your interest in Oklahoma as a territory um, and whether or not you have mistrust of the U.S. government. So many, many um, white settlers, many African Americans are going to be more okay with with statehood, many tribal members, um, especially the five civilized tribes, are going to be much more against the creation of a combined state of Oklahoma. 